Hello everyone, my name is Chris Perfetti and welcome back to the Nuclear Engineering Lecture Series. Today's video is on what is either nuclear power's greatest strength or its greatest weakness, nuclear waste. As a nuclear engineering professor, people ask me about nuclear waste a lot. It's probably the most common question that I get. People will say, well nuclear power is great, but what do you do about the waste? In truth, there are an enormous number of options for dealing with our nuclear waste. And in this video series, I will walk through each one of them, ranging from the slightly practical to the ideal to the utterly hilarious. Now, I'm producing this video series as a part of the 2022 Nuclear Science Week festivities, which is a week dedicated to celebrating everything nuclear science and energy. The 2022 Nuclear Science Week took place from October 17th through October 22nd in 2022. Which means that I'm a little bit behind on producing this video series, but hey, better late than never. Anyway, my goal for this video series is to answer each possible question that you could have about nuclear waste, or at least to provide a basic overview of this subject. I will answer questions such as, what is nuclear waste? How much waste is there? And more importantly, how should we solve the nuclear waste problem, where a problem is in extra large quotation marks. So first, what is nuclear waste? To answer this question, you need to understand what nuclear fuel is, and to understand what nuclear power is, and you need to understand what the meaning of the word is is. 25 year old memes, and who says my jokes aren't current? So what is nuclear waste? Long story short, nuclear waste is nuclear fuel that has undergone fission inside of a nuclear reactor, which thus causes the fuel to be radioactive. Nuclear power releases energy by using neutrons to fission uranium and plutonium atoms, which splits these atoms and their nuclei into two halves, releases energy, and releases neutrons. Neutrons that are released from one fission can go on to cause another fission, which results in a chain reaction. Which results in a chain reaction and a steady release of energy. As a uranium nucleus fissions and releases neutrons, it splits into two smaller nuclei, which are known as fission products. Nuclei are picky. They like to have a certain ratio of protons and neutrons, and these fission products generally have too many neutrons to be stable. This imbalance makes the nuclei unstable, or radioactive, and these nuclei will try to get back into balance and return to stability by undergoing radioactive decay and emitting radiation. So these unstable fission products are why nuclear waste is radioactive and why nuclear waste is dangerous. Each fission reaction creates radioactive unstable nuclei, and these nuclei will try to revert back to stability by undergoing radioactive decay. When they do decay, they release ionizing radiation, which can be dangerous. Exposure to ionizing radiation can break chemical bonds in your DNA, which can kill rapidly dividing cells. If enough of these cells die, you risk experiencing acute radiation syndrome, which is commonly known as radiation sickness. Exposure to radiation can also cause cancer if the damaged cells survive the radiation and mutate in a very, very specific way. Nuclear waste contains so many radioactive fission products that standing next to nuclear waste for any appreciable time could expose you to the radiation from millions or even billions of radioactive decay, which could lead to you getting a fatal radiation dose. To make matters worse, fission products like strontium-90 are chemically similar to calcium, which means that your body can't tell the difference between dangerous radioactive strontium and the calcium that it needs to build bones. So your body will take radioactive strontium that you ingest and place it directly in your bones. Having radioactive strontium in your bones is not good because it constantly exposes your bone marrow to radiation. This puts you at a high risk for diseases like leukemia, bonitis, or other bad things. So how can we protect ourselves from these radioactive fission products in nuclear waste? And what do these fission products even look like? Are they a green sludge like we see on TV? And more so, is it possible to isolate nuclear waste in a way that protects us from it? Or is this nuclear waste just going to leak out and ooze everywhere and expose everything to radiation? To answer this question, we need to talk about nuclear fuel, which is the source of nuclear waste. 
Nuclear fuel is generally, but not always, made of uranium dioxide, which is a ceramic material. Think dinner plates or teacups. Ceramics are very hard, but also very brittle and prone to cracking. Now, these radioactive fission products are created inside of nuclear fuel when it's inside of a nuclear reactor, which means that it is still inside of the nuclear fuel when that fuel leaves the reactor. Again, this nuclear fuel that contains the nuclear waste is a ceramic material. It's a hard, solid material. It's not some boiling green goop that's going to eat its way to the center of the Earth. It's a solid ceramic material. Now, because the fuel is a solid ceramic material, most of the fission products will stay almost exactly where they are created in nuclear fuel. What's more, this nuclear fuel is usually securely encased inside of zirconium metal cladding, which holds the fuel elements in place when they're inside of a nuclear reactor. Now, because nuclear waste is actually just used nuclear fuel, the official PC term for nuclear waste is spent nuclear fuel. I'll be referring to it as spent nuclear fuel throughout this video series. I should also mention that there are other types of nuclear waste other than spent nuclear fuel. For example, if you're undergoing a radioactive isotope treatment and they spill some isotopes that are dissolved in a solution onto some apron or onto some gloves somewhere, that object is now officially contaminated and it's now officially known as a type of nuclear waste, typically low-level nuclear waste. Low-level nuclear waste is typically a lot easier to deal with than spent nuclear fuel, so we won't really discuss it in this video series. So long story short, nuclear waste is essentially spicy ceramic teacups. If you can find a way to isolate this ceramic material until it is no longer radioactive, then you have officially solved your nuclear waste problem. Later on in this video series, we'll talk about just how long you need to wait until your spent nuclear fuel is no longer radioactive. So how much nuclear waste is there? How big is our nuclear waste problem? We have about 88,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel in the United States, and we generate about 2,000 tons of spent nuclear fuel roughly every year, which means that we'll probably have about 92,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel by the time I finish editing this video series. Anyway, our 88,000 metric tons of nuclear waste are comprised of 12 to 14 foot long uranium fuel rods. Again, these fuel rods created energy while they were inside of nuclear reactors, and they did this until the uranium atoms inside of them could no longer sustain a chain reaction. Now, 88,000 tons sounds like a lot, but let's put this number into perspective. If you lined up 88,000 tons of these fuel rods next to each other, they would approximately cover the area of one football field. Just one. Yes, you heard that right. All the nuclear waste in the United States for more than 50 years of nuclear power could fit onto one single football field. Now, this is truly impressive when you consider just how much energy this fuel produced. Just 88,000 metric tons of waste from 50 plus years of nuclear power. During these 50 years, nuclear power produced about 20% of all of the United States' electricity. For comparison, the United States releases about 1.5 billion metric tons of CO2 per year. So nuclear power's waste footprint of 88,000 metric tons is mind-bogglingly efficient. Nuclear power produces so little waste because fission reactions are so energy dense. While one coal combustion reaction releases about four electron volts of energy, one fission reaction releases about 200 million electron volts of energy. So one fission reaction releases 50 million times as much energy as one coal combustion reaction. This is why I said that nuclear waste was one of nuclear power's biggest strengths. Nuclear power produces far less waste per unit of energy than any other energy source. So if you're looking for an energy source that can produce a lot of energy on a tiny bit of acreage and with a minimal waste footprint, then nuclear power is the energy source for you. Okay, so to solve our nuclear waste problem, we only need to dispose of one football field worth of waste. That really doesn't sound that bad. Now, before we discuss how to dispose of this waste, let's talk dollars and cents. How are we going to pay to dispose of this waste, and just how much is it going to cost? Well, it turns out that Congress actually has a plan for this. 
unlike for most things. The Nuclear Waste Policy Act of 1982 imposed a tax on all electricity generated by nuclear power to raise funds to dispose of nuclear waste. This tax was applied at a rate of one milladollar per kilowatt hour, or one tenth of a cent per kilowatt hour, and it was applied to all electricity produced by nuclear power. To put this into perspective, for an average household that runs on 100% nuclear power, this translates to about 90 cents per month. So less than $1 a month theoretically handles the cost of disposing of our nuclear waste, which really isn't that bad. This tax revenue was sent into the U.S. Nuclear Waste Fund, which as of 2021 had a balance of $44 billion. Overall, the fund has received about $55 billion in revenue plus interest and has spent about $11 billion. These expenditures include initial construction for the Yucca Mountain Geological Repository, scoping out other potential geological repositories, and some other nuclear waste program and research activities. That's right. So even after paying for Yucca Mountain, which we will discuss later, we still have $44 billion in the bank to spend on disposing of our nuclear waste. So to summarize, we don't really have that much nuclear waste to dispose of, and we have plenty of money, $44 billion, to use to figure out how to dispose of it. This situation doesn't really sound that bad, it sounds pretty manageable. The goal of the rest of this video series is to decide how we want to spend this money to solve our nuclear waste problem. In the next video, I will begin exploring our options for disposing of nuclear waste. This next video will explore whether we can store this waste underground in a geological repository. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe that you even learned something, and I will see you in the next video.